So let's bring you our Gravitas exclusive. The fighting entered its sixth day today as Turkish television was airing footage of an Armenian drone being shot down. Armenia's president, Dr. Armin Sarkisin, sat down for an interview with Vion. In a clear message to the international community, President Sarkisin blamed Turkey for triggering the conflict. He said Turkey joined the war to bully Europe and to hold it hostage. Here's an excerpt from that interview. President Sarkisian, I interviewed you in Armenia in Yerevan in 2018. It's very good to have you back on Vion, sir. So uh, it's very good to, to see and hear you. And I'm looking forward for our discussion. Yes, uh, it's been almost a week. The hostilities are not ending. Are Armenia and Azerbaijan heading for an all-out war, according to you? This time, it's not only the state of Azerbaijan against the people of Nagorno-Karabakh with an aim to do a ethnic cleansing, but this time Turkey has joined the war. And sure, Turkey has joined the war by bringing with, uh, into within uh, Azerbaijan uh, their officers, their generals, their equipment, their drones, and even F-16 uh, jet fighters. So the aim of this uh, is ethnic cleansing, clean up the Nagorno-Karabakh from Armenians, no matter that these people were living there for thousands of year, years, no matter that there is a way to settle this through negotiations, and as I said, Turkey is fully involved. So Turkey is all involved now, not only in Libya, not only in Syria, not only in Mediterranean, now here as well. The Turkish president has called Armenia the real uh, threat to regional peace. How? Can, you, can, can anybody explain to me? He can call Armenia, I mean, the superpower. Does that make Armenia a superpower? How Armenia is a threat? If he can explain logically where, where is the threat to the region, where Armenia doesn't have any problem with anyone in the region, because it has perfect relations with our, our neighbor Georgia, excellent relations with Russia, very good relations with Iran, the only state that we don't have relations is Turkey, because Turkey doesn't even want to talk or, or recognize the genocide that happened 105 years ago. And the only problem there is there is the Nagorno-Karabakh, a small enclave of Armenians. But the Azeri side and the Turkish side that decided they want to get rid of it. But they can call, call Armenia a threat. Well, uh, it's not the first time I think President Erdogan is is calling this or that, they call something in Libya, they call something in Iraq, they call something in Syria, they always find a reason to get involved. So I think I, I, I completely deny what, uh, I can not deny, I, I, I don't agree at all what President Erdogan is saying. Right. Armenia is not a threat, but, but Turkey is a threat to the whole region now. Who has planned this? You're saying it's a planned thing. Who has planned this? It is planned by Azerbaijan and Turkey. What's in it for Turkey? What's in it for Turkey? Well, several, several things. Of course, they can uh, they can give this uh, the virtual reasons uh, why they are entering there. But the reality is, uh, uh, the uh, the reality is, I'll give you the reasons why. These are opinion of some, uh, many analysts, uh, reporters, or journalists, or political analysts. First of all, there is, it's a, uh, first of all, is to tell to Azerbaijan, you cannot resolve this issue. We, we come there and we help you, we resolve the issue. Secondly, to, uh, to give a lesson to Armenians and saying, don't even mention what happened 105 years ago, because we are not going to to recognize the genocide of Armenians. And if you don't behave well, if you don't behave well, you can see what will happen. So it's showing Armenians their might in order to frighten Armenia, Republic of Armenia. Third, I think they are now in Azerbaijan. And I have a question after, whenever the war will over, will over, over will they leave Azerbaijan or they will stay? So by staying there, they will have tremendous influence on Azerbaijan. And by saying, oh, there is an Armenian threat, 
So we have to stay here. In reality, they will control the pipelines, oil and gas pipelines, going from Azerbaijan to the West, to Europe. And it's not only Azeri oil and, and gas, but it's also from Caspian, from Central Asia. So Turkey that didn't have their oil, that didn't have their oil, they were consumers of oil, they were clients to buy oil. Now they are going to buy, be the ones that will control the oil that goes to Europe. And Europe will become a hostage for the, in front of them. So what is the reason why on earth Turkey has gone into conflict with Greece and Cyprus? Why on earth they have a, what is their interest, what is their reason being in Libya? And so on. So I think the, the Armenia is, is, is not fighting anywhere, any of these countries. But Turkey, Turkey is, is doing it. So Turkey, for Turkey indeed, this is also energy. This is control of Azerbaijan. It is also basically tomorrow they will start bullying Europe because they will control the energy pipelines and so on and so forth. So there is absolutely clear geopolitical gain that Turkey will have with this war. Azerbaijan's president, Ilham Aliyev, has said that his military would keep fighting until Armenian troops withdraw fully from Karabakh. Now, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan has also spoken, and, he, and I'm quoting from what he said. He said, it's not very appropriate to speak of negotiations at a time when intensive hostilities are on. To me, it sounds like a classic stalemate. Are both sides even interested in a resolution, sir? Well, what uh, President Ali have said is called classical, classical ethnic cleansing. So we'll not stop until we'll kill every, every Armenian in that territory. It's called ethnic cleansing, cleaning up territory for people that lived there for thousands of years. That's clear for me. What our Prime Minister, my Prime Minister is saying, basically when people, there are people dying there, we have to do in this specific case two or three steps first. Step one. Turkey has to withdraw. They are not a party of this conflict. They have to withdraw from this conflict. Because imagine if Turkey is involved, then third party, fourth party, the regional powers will start involving. We will get a mess. We'll get something which will be 10 times worse than, than Syria. So the solution is pretty clear. Turkey has, has to withdraw. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, uh, seems to be backing Armenia. Uh, Russia has said that it is willing to host the foreign ministers of both sides. Uh, how hopeful are you with these efforts being made to resolve the conflict? Well, I'm uh, always hopeful. If I would not be hopeful, why I'm sitting here as president, I'm, I'm hopeful and I am uh, the one that is... Uh, I want to work for, for the ceasefire. I want to work very hard speaking to everybody. Well, I don't think that President Macron is supporting Armenia. The President Macron what, is uh, supporting the reality, and the reality is Turkey doesn't have anything to do in this conflict. Uh, I respect President Putin's offer and, and Russia's offer. I think the Armenian side uh, of Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia will always be ready if there will be further steps, and the Azeri side will be saying we will be ready for negotiations. I think we were a part of negotiations. We never denied that we don't uh, like the negotiations where, uh, or were unhappy with negotiations. We, did not, we didn't deny negotiations. In fact, we were hoping uh, that uh, in a new format, these negotiations would continue. Negotiations are run uh, from, my, uh, from Armenian side, uh, the prime minister of my government, and the foreign minister from Azeri side is their foreign minister and, uh, and the president. So they go, any the negotiation on this complicated subject is always complex. Maybe you are happy with negotiations, maybe you are not happy, maybe you are happy with the negotiators. It takes time. And you have to be honestly believing that your solution could be found through dialogue. Because dialogue is not negotiations, it's not only negotiations, it's building up trust. But the moment you break it, start a war, I think that the trust goes back to 30 years back. You've also urged the international community to intervene, and you just told us that this could be worse than Syria if, uh, if there is no timely intervention. But is the world giving this conflict its due attention? Because there are too many distractions. America is busy with an election. Turkey and Russia have too much on their plate, as you've also mentioned. Europe has Brexit and the Eastern Mediterranean tension. So who is going to intervene? 
Well, exactly. I think that uh, your your uh, logical sentence was absolutely beautiful, except the fact that you are saying that Turkey is busy. Turkey is the creator of this conflict. So if you take out Turkey from your logical sentence, yes, indeed, the United States has, uh, is going through presidential elections, so it will be very difficult to have their attention. Yes, indeed, Russia has its own problems, be that in, in Ukraine or with Belarus or maybe others. Yes, indeed, uh, uh, everybody is suffering from COVID. Yes, indeed, Europe is, is very busy with the UK's departure, which is uh, creating you know, more questions rather than solutions, and so on and so forth, and plus the COVID, and plus the economic difficulties of everybody. That is why this moment was chosen by Turkey and Azerbaijan to attack, because they know that the international community is so busy, so they, they can do whatever they like, they can behave like, uh, like I don't know, they can bring terrorists to, that, to, to a terrorist, and, uh, jihadists into this uh, picture, they can bring their army from Turkey, and then the international community will try to intervene, but as you said, because everybody is busy, the, the needed pressure will not be enough. That was their calculation. There's only one thing that they didn't calculate, that people of Nagorno-Karabakh have been fighting for the thousands of years for, for, for themselves. So they are not going to give up. President Sarkisin, thank you very much for being with us on Beyond. Thank you very much. It was nice to hear your voice. Thank you for watching Gravitas on Beyond's YouTube channel. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening around the world, then subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like and share. Thank you very much for watching Beyond. World is one.